<laughs> okay, so uh, this has been a long day and lots of complexity talk, so my talk will be simple ones. So uh, I will formulate the conjecture and give some argument, some based on example and some general argument, and then discuss consequences. The title is plural because I will tell you about two versions of the conjecture. So this is the work uh, that I'm doing, uh, actually part of the work that uh, uh, Daniel presented. And so th this part is sort of follow up. And then also uh, the work that appeared with Cameron Buffer uh, uh, in October. So, so I've been interested in this swamp land question for many years, so that is formulated here. So if somebody gives you an effective theory of gravity, how can, I want, how can I judge whether it is realized as a low energy approximation to a consistent quantum theory with, with ultraviolet completion, such as string theory. So I can rule out some low energy effective theory of gravity. And so weak gravity conjecture is an example of this uh, uh, Swampland criterion. So here's a statement. So suppose somebody gives you a low energy effective theory described by Einstein gravity. So this is based on Einstein Hilbert action, plus some Maxwell field and finite number of matter field. This assumption is also important. Then it can be embedded in consistent uh, UV theory if this low energy theory contains a particle of charge Q with mass much less than Planck scale, so that's in the low energy regime, uh, satisfying this inequality where G is a Newton constant. So, so there is some numerical factor here which I'm suppressing. So this was formulated by uh, Nima Arkani Hamed and the collaborators uh, 10 years ago. So I would like to uh, make a few clarifications. So there is a long-standing question of whether equality should be included or not. And I will discuss this point later in the talk and uh, some of uh, its consequences. Uh, there is some confusion about whether Q is a fundamental charge or not. And my understanding is that it doesn't have to be. There are some examples where uh, it is not. Uh, the normalization factor here I mentioned can be uh, determined either by rational norson bound or BPS bound. And note that this Q includes the gauge coupling. So uh, G is also include uh, coupling constant. So in the case of a string theory, for example, string coupling is canceled between them, which will uh, become important later. Uh, there, so this is for single U1, but in general, there can be multiple U1. So one way to require is insist on this uh, rational Norson bound in general uh, in these cases. So this was formulated by Christian and Grant Remen. And uh, so you take this to the, uh, you take this mass to the right hand side, so that means that this quantity is greater than one. So they generalize this con condition by saying that if there are several of these U1, then, then you plot the charge to the mass ratio over here. So these, are, these vectors are uh, the, the charge and the mass ratio of uh, these part, elementary particles plotted in this higher dimensional plane. And then draw these, and then the unit uh, uh, disk should be included in it. So that's uh, a convex hull condition. So we'll see that uh, later how this will come out. So uh, there have been several motivations for this conjecture. The first conjecture is based on black hole physics, very similar to actually what Daniel talked about, and in fact, uh, the the uh, conjecture, or now partly theorem, uh, that uh, uh, the gro there is no global symmetry in the gravitational theory can be regarded as a limit of this uh, inequality where the, 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 uh, uh, the coupling constant becomes small. At any rate, this is a similar argument that if, the, uh, if this inequality is not satisfied, there are, if there are no su such charged particle, then charge the black hole can decay to Planck size remnant with entropy exceeding the Bekenstein uh, 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 Hawking bound. So, so this is sort of mo one of the motivations. This, th this is not loophole free, so I would rather not to discuss that during this talk. So I think that to me the stronger uh, argument is that it's true in all known construction, top-down construction string series. So I'll give you a couple of examples of that. And then there are some holographic uh, uh, arguments also which I'll review. So first example is a heterotic string compactified on d-dimensional torus. I suppose half of the audience is string theorist, and the other half may not have heard even the word heterotic string. So, uh, so this theory in low energy contains a lot of charged particles and parameterized by PDF and PRI. These are basically the lattice uh, of this uh, charged vector. So it's even self-dual lattice. 
So Walsh's theory of string, uh, heterotic string, consists of left mover and right mover. Uh, in my notation, right mover is what is called the supersymmetric sector, where the supersymmetry act. And uh, you have a BPS state when the right moving excites. So these are the number of excitations of a stringy excitation, the mass of stringy excitation. These are momenta. So, so for given P left and P right, for given charges, if we want to sort of make the mass as small as possible, what you should do is to minimize these excitations. But you cannot set both of them is equal to zero. So for example, if P left square minus two is less than or equal to P right square, then this is smaller than this, so this is big. So in that case, you can set NR to be equal to zero. And any left has to compensate the difference. Uh, we are in the even self dual lattice, so these are integers. So if you set NR equal to zero, this state satisfies half of the supersymmetry of the heterotic string. So these are BPS state. So in that case, as you can see, if NR equal to zero, then charge square is equal to mass square. So with working through the uh, normalization, you see that this inequality is, act inequality is actually saturated in this case. So weak gravity inequality is saturated in B for BPS particle in this heterotic string compactification. So these are actually known as Daboka Habe state. So how about non-BPS state? So suppose, for example, the inequalities uh, between the charges are in the opposite direction where left moving charge is bigger. So in that case, we cannot set NR equal to zero. That would be inconsistent with this inequality. But you can set NREF equal to zero. Well, NR is non-zero, so this state violates supersymmetry. It doesn't preserve any supersymmetry. So in this case, it's kind of interesting because if you write NR equal to zero, mass is equal to square root of half of P to square minus one. So if you ex expand it, you have something like that. And you see there is a minus sign here, which means that actually the mass is actually less, of the ch less than charge, strictly less than charge. So for non-BPS state, actually, the, this inequality is actually strict. There, there is no equality here. So, sorry? So if PF is large, the black hole is extrema, become extremal black hole, in which case this, this goes to zero. So in the limit when this becomes extremal black hole, when the charge is large, the mass is large, this becomes extremal black hole where extremality condition is satisfied. So that's a very good question because this segue to my next sort of point, which is the deviation from this uh, uh, limit of large black hole. So suppose that you have a family of non-BPS states. So for example, exactly as you said, this is an example where you have a family of non-BPS states where P left goes to large and mass becomes large. So suppose you have such a situation, then of course, as you pointed out, in the limit when the charge goes to infinity, this has to saturate the extremal bound. But for finite Q, there can be a deviation. So you can ask, well, how would that deviate? So this was actually studied by uh, Rubens Motor and collaborators. Did I misspell his name? I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so he actually, so they, they, they actually did a very nice work where they actually studied higher curvature correction to Einstein gravity coming from string theory in all, most of all of the calculable examples they could. And they found that actually all of these corrections has this uh, uh, positive, uh, minus, uh, the, is negative. Uh, so namely that again, that uh, this inequality is strictly saturated. So, 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 so uh, strictly satisfied. So this is an example of this phenomena, but they show that uh, this is actually generically true. So this supports a, a, a conjecture that uh, this, e, uh, this e equality can be, inequality can be saturated only for BPS states. So that will be the conjecture that we will we'll discuss later. So uh, there is a holographic motivation, and this is actually by, uh, discussed uh, uh, very nicely in the paper by Daniel last year. So, so this is actually, he also discussed that in his talk. So suppose you have a, a Wilson line operator going uh, through the wormhole of ads schwarz geometry. So it's supposed to be an uh, operator acting on this sum of Hilbert double. So that would, be a tensor, that would be a state in the tensor product of the Hilbert space. So as such, we should be able to express that sum of product of operator acting on the le left Hilbert space 
and write Hilbert space, so we should be able to split this operator in that way. And so he argued in this paper that uh, this requires that there has to be a, a particle carrying the fundamental unit of charge so that you can actually split this. But he also argues that, uh, I'm speaking, so you can correct me, but he also argues that this is not actually totally satisfactory because uh, splitting requires that you have some kind of distance and that you can probe the uh, area around here and discover that these two operators are actually not exactly the same. So in order, f in order for, for this splitting to actually work, the, this uh, uh, gauge uh, degrees of freedom should be emergent. So the claim he, he actually uh, formulated in this paper is that bulk gauge field therefore should be emergent for some scale which is less than the Planck scale. And uh, so, so he worked out the example of the emergent gauge field in the case of CPN model, which is a map from d-dimensional space, d in this case the uh, dimension of ADS space, to the uh, target uh, CPN minus one manifold. And when n is large, uh, this has Coulomb phase, so that means that you have a symmetry in the boundary CFT, as he was saying. And uh, so, so in that case, low energy theory in the Coulomb phase is a U1 gauge field coupled to some scalar particle of charge Q and mass M. And charge is, so this is emergent gauge field, so the charge actually is given by uh, 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 this cutoff uh, to the power 4 minus D. And this is a formula for D greater than 4, but there are some similar formulas that you can look at his paper. But at the same time, when N is large, this renormalizes the Newton constant, and so effective Newton constant is in this way. So if you require that uh, this description is low energy description for scale much less than lambda, where at lambda the, uh, the, the gauge, uh, the less than lambda, the gauge degrees of freedom is the margin. So mass has to be less than lambda, strictly less than lambda. So this translates to this inequality. So again, you get weak gravity inequality without equality, yes? So in Daniel's paper, uh, isn't this just one option that the gauge... Yeah, this is an example of how it works. Uh, but it disappears, disappears to be a generic phenomenon, namely if both uh, gauge degrees of freedom is emergent and if uh, 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 gravitational coupling constant is uh, renormalized by the same effect, then this type of scaling seems to be generic. And uh, if you assume this type of scaling, and if you assume that uh, this description is valid for scale much less than lambda, then, then this seems to be the consequence of that. Maybe Daniel can comment. Yeah, I certainly don't want to say that there's a general proof of that. Right, but you, you worked out how this, the, this works in, in this particular case. Sorry, why does the mass of the particle have to be less than the Well, because the lambda is a cutoff of uh, this gauge theory. So, 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 so this is a low energy description. So this is a low energy description of this. So, so therefore, this description by definition should be buried much less than lambda. You have to resolve the, you have to be able to resolve. So if you go to the scale of lambda, then you start seeing that it is actually not with some line. This is, there is some, some CPN particle going around. So we can, we can discuss further. But that, that's my understanding. So that the fact that this description is valid for scale much less than lambda automatically requires that this mass is much less than lambda. So that's why it's strict inequality. Yeah, where should you resolve it at the Planck scale? It can't be an emergent of the scale higher than that. Right. Yeah. OK. So this, this actually also uh, can lead to derivation of the convex Hull condition that uh, 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 Cliff and uh, uh, Grant was arguing for. So suppose you have multiple U1s and uh, coming from multiple of CPN model. So low energy theory is U1 theory, U1 gauge theory coupled to scalar for each of these charges. So you have several U1s, so you can ask whether the convex hard condition is satisfied. It's easy to work out, so this is sort of a generalization of uh, uh, these formulas. And then it's some, some simple algebra to show that uh, uh, this inequality holds. And this is the standard to be equivalent to the convex hard condition of uh, Chen and Remen. So in this case, actually, we see that th this type of uh, argument support the convex curve condition, or vice versa. So, so the, the, point, the point that I wanted to impress upon you is that in all these cases, mass is actually strictly less than charge in the Planck unit, no equality, unless uh, the corresponding particle 
preserve supersymmetry. And for brains, extended objects, there are similar inequality for the, between the tension and charge carried by the brain. So we naturally led to conjecture that uh, these strict inequalities are holes uh, in general. And uh, so I'm going to argue that this has actually rather, this seems to be a rather innocuous uh, uh, clarification of the conjecture, but uh, this has actually rather dramatic uh, consequences. So, yes. Yeah. Could supersymmetry be emergent? Uh, I'm not sure what in, in we mean by symmetry to be emergent. In the bulk theory, supersymmetry is a gauge theory. So in the boundary theory, you have a, a, a supersymmetry. So I'm, so I'm as stated in another way. If you have a, a dual CFT, so then so when, we, when you say supersymmetry, it means that the boundary theory is superconformal theory, not the approximately superconformal, but the exact superconformal theory. That's the same for U1, though. There's an exact U1. Right. Even it's emergent and right. So even if it's emergent, uh, the, I'm assuming that boundary theory is superconformal, and in that case, equality can be satisfied. But that's on, only in that case. Only in the case when boundary theory is superconformal, equality can be saturated. So in, in all other cases, we are claiming that there are particles or brains which strictly satisfies the inequality. Okay. So that's a conjecture. Okay. I don't see. I don't know of any counterexample. I invite everybody in the audience or, or over the internet to provide us examples. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. So you mean that there can be a family of theories? Uh, so for for each finite. So, so in that case, the kind of consequence I, I'd like to argue for works for any large but finite. Uh, amount, uh, uh, body of the parameter. So one of the consequences is that if you admit that uh, sharpened version of the weak gravity conjecture, then any notion of asymmetric ADS supported by flux must be unstable. And uh, in fact, uh, all known top-down construction from string theory or M theory are of this type. So I'll be arguing, therefore, that all of these examples are unstable. So uh, the reason is that if you have such brain and if you have ADS supported by flux, for example, suppose you have n unit of flux, uh, you can actually uh, uh, create new create brain uh, carrying exactly the kind of mass attention and charge satisfying this inequality, and that would reduce the ten that would reduce the uh, 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 flux, and uh, the. What happens is that if such brain is created, there are Coulomb repulsions. And then also you have a tension, so the brain tries to shrink. But also there is a Coulomb repulsion. And if this inequality is satisfied, then the Coulomb repulsion wins over a contraction by tension. So the brain actually expands. And it was studied by Marzasena, Michelson, and Strominger that such nucleated brain reaches the boundary of ADS within finite time measured in uh, uh, the uh, uh, time variable on the boundary. And it was argued by Daniel and uh, also some other people that uh, uh, the following, that suppose such nucleation probability is finite per unit volume. ADS is infinite spatial, infinite dimension spatial volume. So that means that probability of nucleation would be infinite. Even worse, the divergence, the, the volume tend to diverge near the boundary of ADS. And if the new, so that means that near the boundary, this process would, would, would occur uh, at probability of order one up to ultraviolet cutoff. And if the uh, nucleation happens near the boundary, it, it reaches the boundary within a cutoff time. So that means that the conf dual conformal field theory can exist only uh, would decay within the ultraviolet cutoff time with probability one. So that would mean that actually CFT does not exist. So if there is such a instability, then the, the, there is no uh, ADS CFT because we have, we have proven that the no existence of CFT by reducing it to absurd, uh, absurdity. So, uh, so, so that would be the conjecture. So that, that would lead to a new kind of conjecture that says the non-supersymmetric ADS holography with low energy description in terms of Einstein gravity coupled to a finite number of matter field is in the swampland. And 
Yeah. You could have a supersymmetric example where you break supersymmetry by turning on a relevant operator. That would be allowed. That would be allowed, but then you need to demonstrate that uh, you you go to. So yeah, indeed, indeed. So 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 right. So so I, here I'm saying that uh, I'm uh, this. Uh, uh, disallowing ADS holography, namely ADS CFT correspondence. You can have sort of renormalization group flow, and you have non, uh, dual to uh, non super non ADS uh, bulk geometry, for example. You would say you, at the IR of what he said, you would end up in something with small radius. Right. Yeah. So in the IR, they so so in the, so it, it, so so I'm saying that this this would not so 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 I I would be saying that. Uh, you can this that type of deformation cannot reach to a conformal fixed point with smooth ADS dual because that would be violation of this conjecture. So that would mean, as Daniel said, that you can flow to UV, uh, the IR or so, so deep in the inside of the bulk geometry, but eventually it has to hit singularity or have something else happen because if you reach if you go to some new uh, smooth ADS plateau in the bulk. That would be dual to some uh, 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 CFT uh, fixed point in the boundary conformal phase. The ADS may not be infinite in extent as long as towards the boundary it becomes a supersymmetric. Yeah, but uh, this would disallow conformal fixed point, non supersymmetric conformal fixed point, yeah. which is dual to ADS in the deep in the bulk. Can we maybe discuss uh, uh, later? I'm doing the chair as well. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so. He, so here, here is here is a uh, uh, here is sort of illustrated uh, example. Uh, so I'm actually uh, pointing out this example by uh, uh, Shamit Kachur and Eva Silverstein in 1980, uh, 1989 because this is very famous example and actually be a uh, very nice uh, uh, paper with uh, with good very great idea. And the, the point is that well you know this uh, correspondence ADS CFT. This is a sort of famous original example of ADS CFT. So you divide this. Uh, geometry by the, uh, the S5 geometry by the action of discrete group, which is subgroup of SO6, which is the same as SU4. And you can show that if gamma does not fit in the SU3 of SU4, then supersymmetry is completely broken. And uh, you can also identify the dual uh, theory by using the procedure of Michael Douglas and uh, Greg Moore. And uh, however, uh, this does not quite work in the non supersymmetric case. What happens is that if gamma has a fixed point, so you have a fixed point and you look at the spectrum of uh, closed string in the twisted sector, then you find that there is a tachyon, which violates the brighton and friedman bound. And in the dual uh, CFT side, what happens is that you have a double trace deformation, which cannot find the fixed point. And so, so th th this doesn't work. So you can say that, well, how about if you have, uh, if it doesn't have a fixed point? And even if it doesn't fix, has a fixed point, if S5 is small, you still have tachyon. If S5 is large, then there is actually new kind of instability that was actually pointed, by, by, pointed out by Witten uh, many years ago related to the, uh, the, uh, in the context of uh, non-supersymmetric Karutakrine compactification. What happens is that if gamma does not have a fixed point in S5, there is a non-contractable cycle in this quotient which breaks supersymmetry. And if you have that, you can actually construct a geometry where as you go in, into the deep, uh, in the ADS uh, side of the bulk, this, uh, this cycle actually contract and create the uh, bubble of nothing, which expand and they hit the boundary in finite time. So this was actually explicitly constructed by Horowitz, or, or Gera and Polchinski in uh, 2007. So this is sort of one of the uh, examples where uh, a uh, non-supersymmetric version uh, uh, failed to give actually ADS-CFT correspondence. In fact, to my knowledge, no known construction of a non-supersymmetric ADS has been demonstrated to be stable. I know there are few people, even in this audience, who uh, propose such construction, and uh, we have had many email exchanges, so we'd be happy to discuss that uh, also uh, later. Sorry, Hiroshi, the yeah. correct statement is that the jury is out, because... Yes. That, that's was what I meant by demonstrated. But, yeah, but <laughs> yes, yeah. jury is out to be much sort of yeah, uh, diplomatic way of saying it, I, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so there are actually some. Uh, so this is actually uh, also interesting. So there is actually a, a statement that follows from the bulk reconstruction argument that, 
Of course, it is known that in order for a CFT to have bulk dual, you have to have a spark, sparse light spectrum condition. But uh, it has been argued based on the bulk reconstruction argument, and maybe she or uh, Dan Daniel can uh, confirm that, that uh, this is actually also sufficient. That if you have a CFT with sparse light spectrum condition, that uh, you have uh, a weakly coupled uh, bulk dual. Well, if you assume such additional conjectures, then you would be concluding that there are no non-supersymmetric conformal field theory with sparse light, light spectrum conditions. So that would be an interesting prediction for conformal field theory by itself. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. So uh, is this a statement about um, families of theories at arbitrarily large n? Could I have a non-supersymmetric CFT isolated at n equals a million? Would that be OK? Or? Well, so I would like to see that uh, Einstein description to be parametrically valid. Okay. So you, I would like to have some large and parameter. You need, you need some large parameter which you, I can adjust to. Be, so you need a family, actually. Okay. So an is isolated one is okay. I mean, but that, that's a very strong restriction, though. Right? OK. I mean, if, there's a, if there are non-supersymmetric solutions of the bootstrap sitting out there at c equals a billion, they're probably just sitting there all by themselves, right? OK. I mean, it seems like you would have to say that uh, if there is a solution, you, you'd have to say, you know, you know, it'd be some numerical thing. Like, if the gap is bigger than 0.27 times c, then it has to be super. I mean, yeah, so, point. but then, then there is a subtlety. Then there, there is a subtlety in, 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 in distinguishing this. I mean, uh -huh. so, 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 namely that you can, we, you, there might be a situation where this is violated by, uh, by 10 to the uh, uh, Google. And then, <laughs> and then, then but, but the parameter is like just 10 to the billion or something like that. And then, then in that case, is, is it satisfied or not satisfied? I mean, it'd be very surprising if there were non supersymmetric families. I guess, I don't know. Well, I, mean, that, I mean, I don't know. So you in particular would be saying that there's no ideas to be pure and graph. Uh, you need a Maxwell theory, Maxwell field. Yes. Seems unlikely that you'll have families in non supersymmetric factor if they exist because you'll have to, from the bulk point of view, stabilize the moduli anyways. Right. So if they exist, they will exist sort of as isolated solutions. But, uh, okay, they may not exist. I mean, I think we have to think of it like the results of the modular bootstrap. You know, where they're just some, they're just some weird numbers. You know, C has to be bigger than a million and ten, and uh, the gap has to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that could be true. Okay. So, so what I need to think is that uh, what's the distinction between strict inequality and non-strict inequality? Where you allow now, such a possibility? Now we, don't, now we have a conjecture. Bec because there, this can have correct. So, if, for example, if uh, 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 the uh, uh, I, I, uh, the Newton, uh, so, so, so if this parameter is large but finite, there can be correction to Reissner Norton bound, for example. Yeah, but we don't just use the, you just use the weak gravity conjecture to motivate this very general quick okay. conjecture about CFTs, which is that there aren't large radius ones. Right, so yeah. You can just forget about the weak gravity conjecture. Right, well, we, are, that's, well that, we can take that point of view. Here I'm taking the point of view that if you assume this, then, then you can actually exclude yeah. uh, rather convincingly at least a class of non supersymmetric holography that are supported by fluxes, which are all known examples. So. Uh, so that would be a stronger statement. If you are all parametrically large, then I have to think whether what, what it would mean in this case. One more question. Do you know uh, what the status of these MPQR examples and Arvin Morgan's thesis are related to your... So, so, so there are two things that... So, so you're talking about which example, the one that uh, Haber Riar worked out or which... He was uh, looking at a, a, a relation of this tunneling to nothing instability and intoxications of ADS4 cross. Uh, remind me which model, because I have had, like, after we posted the paper, we had, like, 20 uh, <laughs> different emails with 20 different examples. So I think mo uh, mo um, most of that was had either uh, scalar fields that are sort of right on the Brighton Road of Friedman bound or uh, brain, which uh, exactly saturate uh, the uh, charge and the uh, mass being uh, tension being equal 
at the leading Einstein gravity correction. And uh, for the latter type, uh, uh, for example, the argument by uh, Rubers and the collaborator uh, seems to suggest that if you look at the subleading correction, then, then it would go in the direction which sta would stabilize the geometry. So maybe we should talk about, because this is a very specific example, so we should talk later. Sort of yeah. Right. Well, maybe um, let's just uh, thank Rusty again.